Hey, good morning, Southridge. Uh, welcome to another week of uh, church here at Southridge Church. Uh, if this is your first time, I just want to say thank you for giving us your time uh, to just spend your morning with us or, or whatever day you're watching this video. Uh, we're really excited that we're able to connect with you. Uh, we hope that today just brings a new clarity. Maybe you're just kind of visiting, you're just trying it out, testing the waters. Uh, we're just thankful that you're here. Uh, here at Southridge Church, we really believe that it's not an accident that you're here or that you stumble upon a message or, or you come to church. We really believe that God has ordained that moment, that he set it up for you to have an encounter with him, uh, for you to maybe even learn a little bit more or even have uh, a revelation about who he is or see him in a different way than what you may have understood or, or grown up knowing. And so we're really excited that you're here. Uh, my name is Jake Ferris. I'm honored to serve here. Uh, and today uh, we, we're going to be diving into a message that has kind of been part of a series about relationships. And what we've been really taking the time to learn and dive into the, the Bible about is that we're on this journey learning about what Jesus talked about for relationships. Uh, basically, this whole year with Southridge, we've been diving in and we kind of dedicated this year to being, hey, you know, let's learn more about Jesus. Let's learn more about what he says about specific aspects. And this series is all about relationships and what Jesus talks about. Uh, every series that we do here, we have a key text, and what that key text provides is, is really a launching point or a jumping off point to kind of further uh, diving into the scripture and learning more about it. And so our scripture, our key text for this series is Matthew seven twelve, and it comes from the Passion Translation, and it says, in everything you do, be careful to treat others in the same way you'd want them to treat you. For that is the essence of all the teachings of the law and prophets. Obviously, we added some emphasis, but this idea that we have to be careful on how we treat people, because really it's the essence, it's everything. It comes into a culmination of, of that idea that we should be treating others in the same way that we would want them to treat us, which is kind of a hard pill to swallow if you've ever been in any kind of relationship, whether it be a friendship, whether it be a marriage or whatever. Sometimes you get hurt. Sometimes you get uh, stung by people's words or actions, and it's kind of easy to dip into, hey, you know what? You, you did this for me. I'm going to come at you or, or kind of say these hurtful things back, but really it doesn't foster any kind of relational growth. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the choice to forgive. This idea that we, in relationships, whether it be a friendship, a marriage, or a dating relationship, we have this opportunity to choose to forgive. And it's so important, and it, and it just creates this foundation for growth and, and for just a better relationship in our lives. Uh, but before I get into that, I always like to kind of recap what we talked about last week. If you didn't get to last week's message, I uh, just encourage you to come go and watch that after this one. Uh, we, we really talked about this idea of judging, uh, about how we shouldn't judge because it, it doesn't really help us. And we use the verse Matthew 7, 1, uh, it says, do not judge others and you will not be judged for you will be treated as you treat others. That same idea of our key text that we should treat people just like we would want to be treated. And if you're a little kid, it kind of reminds you of the golden rule, right? That we should treat others as we should be, as we want to be treated. And so we talked about this idea that, um, you know, that very famous scripture in that passage where Jesus is talking about, hey, you know, you're, you're pointing out the speck in someone else's eye, but really you have a log in your own. And we talked about how internally in our lives, we may be kind of judging people and pointing out all these inconsistencies or, or these things that are, are wrong with them, maybe their faults or something, but we're really not paying attention to us and what God wants to do in our heart, what God wants to do in our lives, how he wants to uh, make a way for us to be in better relationship with other people around us. And we also talked about how, uh, and Troy talked about this, he talked about how there's two types of measures uh, when, when God, that the rabbis in that time, they were teaching about how God uses two types of measures and that uh, Jesus actually talked about, hey, you should be careful about the standard to which you're, you're judging people or, you're, or the standard to which you're, you're actually um, evaluating people because that's the same standard that God would use with you. And so we talked about this idea that there's two measures and the measures are justice and, and mercy. And we obviously we would want to be uh, measured to the standard of mercy more so than justice because, you know, the life I've lived, at least, I, I don't know if I, I'm really keen on the idea of being judged to the standard of justice because, I, you know, I, I don't deserve 
to have that mercy. But God still, with his love, with his passion, because of Jesus, you know, we have that open door to that standard to be judged upon mercy. And that's the, the standard that God uses. And so today, like I said earlier, we're, ca- we're talking about forgiveness. We're talking about the choice to forgive. And the big idea for this uh, message is the fact that relational health flows from the fountain of forgiveness. Think about that. Just stop right now. Just think about it right now. Relational health flows from the fountain of forgiveness. Think about all the relationships that you have in your life, that you come in day in and, and day out. You have contact with. Maybe you're married. Maybe you have a friend that's very, very close. This idea that, you know, if we don't have forgiveness in our relationships, our, our relational health is actually on a decline. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be healthy because we're storing all this bitterness or resentment or, or maybe we have some pride in there. You know, we're gonna be talking about that a little bit later. But the important thing is that we need to get this, that forgiveness is a huge part and plays a huge part in our relationships and the health of it. And so we're gonna be talking about that, breaking it down. But before we get into it, do you know you have choices in your relationship? And I know you're like, duh, yeah, I, I, I can choose where I want to go out to eat. I can choose, you know, how I want to, to talk or, or anything like that. But really, like, the choices that you have in your relationship day in and day out, we don't really think about. And I'm, I'm not talking about where to eat or what to do. More so, I'm talking about the fact that you have a choice in your response that may have a positive or negative impact in your relationships. You have a choice in your response. And I think when we're in the heat of the moment, when we're getting hurt or, or maybe we, we just... Um, Maybe we just dealt with a friend that, that's kind of giving us some bad words or, or, or really hurting us, offending us. You know, we may jump to conclusions and we may act in a way. And I know I've been guilty and, and I don't know if you have or ever experienced that, but you may jump to a response that is kind of negative. But do you know in those moments, you have a choice to respond with a positive, uh, with, a, with this positivity, with this idea that, hey, you know what? Yes, I've been hurt but I want to choose forgiveness, that I have that choice, that you have that opportunity in that moment. Have you ever said or did something that you later regret? Okay, maybe you don't want to admit it, but I think there's times in our lives where we have had those moments, where we regret it, where we said something too quick and and we really want to take it back, but you really can't because the hurt's already happened. Uh, But let me ask you this. Have you ever been on the receiving end of someone's hurtful words or actions? Something where you had to choose to forgive someone. Because that's where we're going to be building off. That's, that's going to be our jumping point. That's what we're talking about today. We we're talking about the choice to forgive others. So I talked about our key text for the series. And, and within, those, uh, you know, within our weeks of series or weeks of messages, we have a key text. And today's key text comes from Matthew 6, 14 through 15. And it says, If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. And here, I, and I love, I love the Bible. I love Matthew. I love the Gospels because we're really getting to see Jesus. And I think oftentimes we think of Jesus as, you know, he's, he's this person that doesn't say anything very hurtful. Or we have this idea, this mental image of him. But really in chapter 5, 6, and 7, Jesus is really talking to his disciples and teaching other people the harsh truths about the kingdom. And, and this is one of them. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive your sins. Man, that's, that's tough. That's a tough one to wrestle with, but it's true. And that's what Jesus was really wanting to get a hold of. I think he was trying to uh, have this shock value in people like, oh, I need to really think about how I'm treating others. It can be a powerful thing knowing that you have a choice in a situation. It really is that you have this free will that you're able to choose things. You can choose to do something that may have a positive or negative impact on the situation. And in our key text, Jesus is talking to his disciples and lays out the formula. And it's really simple. If you forgive, you will be forgiven. But if you refuse or choose to withhold forgiveness, then you will not be forgiven. And I like to, when I was preparing this message, I thought about this idea. Um, you know, imagine yourself going down the highway, you're driving, you just got maybe your new, new Bronco 2021, or maybe you're, you got your Mustang or whatever you're driving and you're driving and maybe you're going a little bit faster than the speed limit and you get pulled over, right? And just think about that situation and who would, who would want to pay that fine? Like you deserve that. You were driving a little over the speed limit, like you deserve that, but would you want to pay the fine or would you want to be forgiven? Would you want to be let go? 
I think the easiest and, and probably 100% of the people would say, yeah, I want to be let go. I want to be forgiven from that. But let's flip it. And it's easy to, to, to decide in that situation. Yes, of course, we would want to be forgiven when we are in the wrong. But why do we seldom choose forgiveness when it's others who, who hurt us or who are in the wrong? Why do we seldomly choose to forgive people? And that's what I kind of want to get into today is, is the fact that in our lives, and it, it's kind of this weird thing, you know, we, we want to be forgiven but it's very hard to, to give forgiveness. At moments in our life, it's hard to choose to forgive. But really that idea, that choice, that, that choosing and walking down that path of forgiveness, that's going to lead to a better life. That's gonna be leading to a better relationship. As we talked about the big idea for today is that your relational health flows from a fountain of forgiveness. That it's going to be a, a wellspring in your life and in your relationships when you allow forgiveness to be the first response. And yeah, and I get it, and, and maybe you've lived your life and you've, you've been hurt a lot, and some things are really hard to forgive, and I understand that. I'm not speaking as if I've, I've never been hurt and it's so easy to forgive, but really, like, those deep cuts, they hurt and they sting, but the true healing is going to come in forgiveness. The true healing is going to come through forgiveness. And I'm not saying forgiveness excuses anything. I'm not saying forgiveness uh, is the final thing. And, and it's right after you forgive and you choose to forgive, it all goes away and the pain goes away. That's not true oftentimes. I mean, I think sometimes we, we really have to wrestle. And forgiveness may be a process, but it's important for us to at least take the first step down that path. At least to, to say, hey, hey, you know, I'm going to decide in my heart. I'm going to choose to forgive, even though I may be still hurt, and I still may feel those feelings. And I think some of the reasons, and I want to outline them, outline them uh, why we don't choose to forgive, and I think the, the, I kind of boiled it down to three, and I, I don't think this is an exhaustive uh, list. I do believe that there's other things, other factors that contribute, but I want to say the first one and the big one is, is offense, that we feel offended that we are hurt um, because someone said something. And that's why we don't dole out forgiveness. That's why we don't give out forgiveness. It's because we're offended. You know, we, we deal with that in our culture every day. You know, people deal with offense. People are hurt by things. And, and when people say things, especially close people to us, we, we deal with offense. And that could be a big bait. Um, that could be something that could lead to bitterness, that can lead to resentment, those offense, if we keep it stored up in our heart. But you need to choose to forgive. I think another big one, uh, a big bullet point would be pride. We just don't believe that that person needs to be forgiven. Like, no, like I'm, I'm gonna be weak if I choose to forgive. And, and that's not the case. Your, your strength actually comes when you show forgiveness, when you give forgiveness. There's strength in that. Because you're, hey, I'm gonna be the bigger man or woman. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the bigger person. I'm gonna forgive them, even though they offended me, even though they have a right to not be forgiven. And a man, imagine this, put us in our relationship with Jesus. I mean, Jesus didn't have to forgive us. He didn't have to go to the cross, but he chose it because he loved us. He talks about it in the gospel. He says, hey, you know, you didn't choose me. I chose you. I chose you. I wanted to forgive you. I wanted to go to the cross. Even though you didn't deserve my mercy, my grace, and my forgiveness, he still chose to forgive. Even while he was on the cross, you know, he's saying, hey, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. He's even pleading with God the Father in that moment when people are coming against him, when he's dying on the cross, and he's still saying, hey, forgive them. So that's a big thing. And I think pride gets in the way. I think the last one, at least in my list, is, is we want to be vindicated. We want the other person to feel pain. We want to, hey, you know what? You did this to me. I'm going to do this for you. That idea of eye for eye, tooth for tooth, right? You did this to me. I'm going to hurt you even more. But let's go down that line. Let's think about that. If there's just hurt and the response is hurt and it just keeps going, soon you're not going to have anything left. It's going to be broken. It's going to be smashed to pieces, your relationships, if you just hurt, 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 hurt. Oh, you did this to me. I'm going to do this to you. And we really don't choose to forgive because we're not vindicated. We don't feel like, ah, man, like I'm, I'm, I'm 
complete or, or, or I feel like, um, you know, that's what that needs to happen. You know, we also, we oftentimes think that it's not fair, that forgiveness really isn't fair. But that's in those moments when we want to be vindicated, we have to trust God. We have to trust in his, uh, his justice and his mercy, right? We have to really lean on him in those times. The truth is, is that when we withhold forgiveness, we are really holding back reconciliation. The truth is when we hold, withhold forgiveness, we are really holding back reconciliation. See, forgiveness lays this groundwork to be reconciled. Just like Jesus forgave us on the cross and he died and rose again and, and we're able to be reconciled with the Father, it's, it's because of the forgiveness. It's because of the sacrifice, because he chose to go to the cross. We can't have restored relationship with people if we're not choosing to forgive because then it becomes a battle back and forth, hurt and hurt, and then you start to not even talk to each other and everything like this, and it's just a messy uh, thing that you, you deal with, and it's just heavy. It's a heavy burden. But when you choose forgiveness, and when you say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna give forgiveness even though this person doesn't deserve it. That's when reconciliation happens. That's when healthy communication happens. That's when relational health is just sprouting and flowing, and it's growing into something more. That's when your relational health is at your highest, is when you're choosing to forgive day in and day out. Forgiving someone is the end of one road and actually the beginning of another. It's a pathway to healing for the other person and yourself. Do you think about that? That your forgiveness, when you dole out, when you give out forgiveness, when you are forgiving someone, you're actually helping yourself in, in kind of a way because you're not having to carry that burden that burden of bitterness, that burden of revenge, that burden of, of wanting to, to be vindicated. You don't have to carry that anymore because forgiveness is just a, a pathway to, to restoration. It's a pathway to reconciliation. So uh, as we get into the message here, I, I kind of want to point out th three things that we, we choose instead of forgiveness. And I'll, I really want to highlight the fact that we should choose forgiveness uh, despite these being kind of apparent choices, kind of ideas that are really easy to, to step into, really easy to, to say, hey, you know what? I know I'm hurt. I'm not gonna choose forgiveness. I'm gonna choose this thing. And the first one I wanna talk about is that we need to choose forgiveness instead of revenge. We need to choose forgiveness instead of revenge. And, and this idea of revenge, this idea of vindication that, hey, you know what? I've been wronged. I wanna wrong the other person. And the uh, text I want to use and, and talk about today is that you have, uh, it comes from Matthew 38, and it says, you have heard the law that says the punishment should match the injury. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I mean, that's where that old adage comes from. It comes straight from the Bible. And what Jesus was quoting here in Matthew 5, and I love the gospels. I love how Matthew 5, 6, and 7, if you go and read them, every, they're all intertwined with kind of these life lessons, these hard truths. And it says, you have heard the law that says the punishment should match the injury, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And what Jesus was talking about is what was written in Exodus and De Deuteronomy in the law, the, the law of the prophets, right? The law of Moses, the law that said, hey, you know what? If they hurt you, you can hurt them just the same, right? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But what Jesus, when he was on this earth, what he represented was kind of an upside down kingdom. What he shared was like, yeah, the law says this, but I'm showing you a different way. I'm showing you the better way. I'm showing you the higher way. And the truth is that revenge makes a great snack, but it's not a great meal. And what I mean by that is that ew, it tastes good in the moment. Let me tell you, it tastes good in the moment. Revenge feels good, but really it's, it's a, fleshly, uh, a fleshly desire to, to seek revenge, to want to be uh, vengeful, right? It, it, it's actually something that's not healthy. Like, think about it. Think about it. You're, you, maybe you, you have a hankering and, and you love snacking and you love, but think about like if you just ate Twinkies all the time, you're not going to have a healthy body. It's, it's truth. I know you love it. I know you may, you may love Twinkies or, or, or maybe you're a person that loves chocolate, whatever, but that same idea kind of carries over to revenge. If we're just always wanting to be vengeful, we're not going to have any relationships. We're not going to be healthy. 
It feels good, but doesn't offer anything sustainable. There is no growth slash life when we choose revenge. There's nothing. When we choose revenge, it's not healthy. It doesn't lead to anything that's great. See, the fact is choosing to forgive actually fosters growth, and it lays a foundation for relational restoration. And my kind of personal side of this is that when I was younger, you know, there's a lot of people that wronged me, and I felt like, hey, you know what, I, I really want to get back, to, back at them. And so I would, I would not talk to people. I would shut people out of my life just because they wronged me. And the fact in that, and, and the person that I really hurt was myself because I didn't have people who were, I didn't choose forgiveness. And when I, cho- when I didn't choose forgiveness, I was actually shutting all these doors to people who were really important in my life just because of a simple hurt just because I allowed things to kind of seep in. And it leads to our next uh, idea, which is choose forgiveness instead of bitterness. Choose forgiveness instead of bitterness. Because bitterness becomes a poison to us internally. When we harbor bitterness, it doesn't lead to anything great. It's actually really hurting us. And the verse I want to talk about with this point is that in Matthew 5, 43 through 44, Jesus says, you have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In other manuscript, manuscripts, it says to do good to those who hate you. This idea reflects what Paul states in Romans twelve twenty, in which he is actually quoting in 25, 21 through 22. It's all related to this idea that When you choose goodness, when you choose forgiveness, when you choose to do something, even though someone hurt you, when you choose a good uh, thing for that person, you're actually heaping shame on them. When you treat others uh, better than they deserve, you're actually kind of opening their eyes to this idea that, hey, you know, I shouldn't act this way. I shouldn't say these things. So when we choose forgiveness instead of harboring bitterness, when we choose to do good instead of harboring bitterness, we're actually helping And we have to remember that hurt people hurt people. So if you're harboring bitterness, if you're harboring resentment, you're only hurting yourself because you're allowing yourself to get, uh, to be controlled by hurt, to be controlled by pain and bitterness. And that's not healthy. You know, uh, like I said, you know, I, I, I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't grow up into a great family and in a perfect family, you know, uh, but and I don't think all, any of us really have, but I know my family has struggled with this idea of bitterness, of harboring bitterness and resentment. There's been years where my family members haven't talked to each other just because of a simple act, just because they didn't choose to forgive. And what happens is that when you harbor bitterness, you're not only affecting you and the other person that's involved, you're actually kind of spreads out into other areas, to other family members. You know, for me, uh, a situation that may, may have happened between my, my aunts and, and another family member, that spreads out into everybody and it becomes very divisive in your family, especially in mine. So we can't choose bitterness. We have to choose forgiveness, even though it's hard, even though in the moment it doesn't feel right. But we have to walk down that road of forgiveness. The last point I wanna talk about is that we should choose forgiveness for your own freedom, which is interesting. We should choose forgiveness for our own freedom. Do we ever think about how free forgiveness is? That we're able, how, how freeing it is when we choose to forgive. We, we like to think we're, we're easy to wrap our head around, hey, you know, I should choose forgiveness instead of revenge. Yeah, you're, that's probably a good thing. I should choose forgiveness instead of bitterness. But this idea that, And those are externally affecting things. Like I'm choosing to forgive someone else for their benefit. I'm choosing to forgive someone else so I don't have bitterness. But this idea that we're able to feel free when we choose to forgive, that we're freeing ourselves from that burden. And the verse I wanna talk about is Matthew 5, 48. And it says, but you are to be perfect even as your father in heaven is perfect. The two points uh, that we talked about earlier affect our choices around us, about the people around us. However, this one talks about the internal effect that happens when we choose to forgive. There's this freeing thing that happens in our heart. 
And I don't think we think about the freeing factor that forgiveness gives us. This idea, and I, I know maybe you've been in the church a while and you heard, about, heard this verse, you know, but you are to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And we're like, man, how can I be perfect like God? How can I be perfection? How can I ever be that? Because there's so many things in my life that I think are, are kind of against the perfection that, that God wants me to be. How can I ever reach that? And I want to let you know that this idea of perfection, this, this word that they use, perfect, in our, our English language actually converts to this Greek word, the original word, the original language that the uh, New Testament was written in. It relates to this word teleos, which means completeness. It has this idea that it's a complete factor, not just a perfection as a state of being, but completeness as a state of who you are, that I'm complete in who I am, because I'm choosing to forgive. Because it's a freeing, this completeness idea. The Greek word doesn't speak to perfection in our understanding of the word, but it speaks to perfection and completeness, needing nothing else. Think about that, that when you choose to forgive, you're freeing yourself. And when you're free, you're not needing anything else. You're not needing someone else's uh, words. You're not needing uh, kind of vindication. You're not needing all those things that are negative. When you choose to forgive, you're freeing yourself. We're freeing ourselves from a burden when we choose to forgive. When we refuse to forgive, we are allowing ourselves to carry a burden that was never meant to be carried. Jesus doesn't want you to carry a burden that isn't his. His yoke is easy to bear and his burden is light. It's light. So with everything that we talked about this morning, I really want you to remember the fact that forgiveness is freeing yourself. That when we choose to forgive, we don't harbor any bitterness. When we choose to forgive, we're not wanting to take revenge. It changes our heart posture. It changes us from the inside out. And so I just want to pray right now as I close um, for you and for your family and for whatever your situation is, that forgiveness would be the, the hallmark in your life, that people would start to recognize you in your relationship with Jesus because your choice to forgive, that it, you're so easy to choose to forgive. So wherever you are right now, if you could just bow your heads, close your eyes, and just take this moment to take in this prayer, to really think about this idea of forgiveness. Lord, I just thank you so much for everyone that's watching, God. I pray that you would step into their life, that you would have your way in their heart, and that this idea of forgiveness would be planted deep in their heart, that we would all choose to forgive because it's freedom when we choose to forgive. It may be hard, but Lord, I pray that you would be with everyone that's stepping down this road, this road of reconciliation, God. I pray that your spirit would be with them as they step into this week and that whatever wrong, whatever offense that may happen during the week, that they would choose to forgive, that they would remember that's an opportunity to forgive because it leads to freedom and it leads to perfection and completeness, Lord. I thank you in Jesus' name, amen.